And next up will be Genesis chapter 18. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on, for therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, So do as thou hast said. All right, so this is taking place uh, not too long after the uh, events of the previous chapter. Okay, and so we have here in, uh, in the first verse, we have Abraham is sitting in, in his tent door in the heat of the day. It says, and, and the Lord is going to appear to him this day. Okay. And what happens is, in verse 2, it says he lifts up his eyes and looks and sees three men standing there. Okay, now... From what we can tell from this chapter, one of those was corresponding to the Lord, all right? And the other two were, were going to be angels, all right? So it's not just, uh, but they were appearing as three men, all right? And, uh, and I'll go ahead and, you know, and say now, I mean, you know, that we typically, you know, say that uh, when God appears in the flesh, I mean, he appeared as Jesus, all right, at the time that, you know, that, that Jesus was born, all right? But there's a rare occasion here or there where he appeared as a man, and so again, whether you want to call that Jesus or just say he appeared as, as a man, but here, based on the conversation here, that when the Lord appeared to him, he appeared to him as one of these three men, all right, and the other, the other two were angels, okay? So, so you'll understand that as we go through the conversations, they'll make more sense if you know that that's who they are. Otherwise, it's like three men, it's like, what, what are they talking about, all right? But here, in this case, if you know that one is the Lord and the other two are angels, then it'll make more sense. So here in verse 2, so it says, now he lifts up his eyes and he sees, he sees the three men there, all right? So... In, in starting out, he, he, he greets them as, you know, oh, visitors, you know, I got, I got three men coming to visit me here, here in my tent, all right? So he's doing what any, any hospitable host would, would do, all right? And uh, so in, in verse 4, he says, uh, let me get you some water, you know, you, you, can, you can wash your feet, you, you can rest on, under the tree, all right? And in, in 5, he says, I'll, I'll get you some bread, all right? And uh, this way you, you can rest, you can eat, all right? So he's, you know, treating them as... Three visitors that are you know, walking along through whatever area was they lived in, and then they're stopping here by where Abraham was, and says, "Let me, let me take care of you, all right? Let me get some eat, get, get some water, get, get some rest, all right?" And he's treating them as you know, three men who are coming to visit him on this day, right? Not knowing the servant's going to follow as far as their conversation, but he's just greeting them as, as, as guests at this time. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf, tender and good, and gave it unto a young man, and he hasted to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. Now he's going to actually give them like a full, a full meal here, right? You know, you're... You're my guest, you're my business, I've got to feed you. So uh, in, in 6, he tells his wife, you know, get, get together three measures of a fine meal and, and knead it, which, you know, is it make cakes upon the heart, cakes or, or, or bread. So she's actually going to be baking, baking bread here, right? Or, you know, bread or cakes. So, uh, so how long that was going to take, but it says, you know, let's move quickly so they can actually eat. And, and actually, when I was reading this earlier, I mean, it, it's amazing to me how quickly they would have turned something into something that you could eat, right? I mean, first with what I just said, she was going to bake just like that. But now look at the next part. It says, and Abraham ran to the herd and fetched a, a calf, tender and good, and, and gave it to a young man to, to dress it. In other words, they took a live calf and, and, and they killed it, and, and, now and they cut it up, and, and they put it on the, on the fire to, to, make, to make meat, right? So here they, it went from, from cow to, to the table all within one, the, you know, one period of time. So it's, it's amazed me how quickly they moved here, right? That, like I said, I don't know how long they normally would have taken to do this, but uh, you know, to, me, to me, I think the process is a lot longer than that. Uh, you know, today, you have to do stuff to you know, maybe dry it out or, or whatever you, you do to it, right? But here, that's, they went, went from cow to, to the table in, in, in one day, right? So, they, so he, he said he, he took it to dress it, or, or he hasted, which meant he did it quickly. 
right? And then eat, they took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them, all right? And, and they did eat, so this was their, their meal, all right? They had, they had meat, they had cake or bread, they had butter, they, they had a nice full meal here, so it was a, you know, a nice spread that, the, that Abraham and Sarah put out for these three men as they were, were visiting. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? Up until now, it's just been, you know, a, a visit and a meal and, and so forth, all right? But now, now they're getting down to the, to the business part of why they even came there. And this is where you start to see who, who this really is. It wasn't just three random strangers walking along, all right? Because in, uh, first they said, where's uh, Sarah, thy wife? All right, so even that, I mean, if they were strangers, how do they know what his wife's name was? And in fact, what her current name is. Remember, she was just renamed in the previous chapter, all right? And, uh... And then the, the, the man who really is, is, is the Lord says, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life, and lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. All right? So really almost exactly the same thing that God said to Abraham in the previous chapter, right? saying that your, your wife's going to have a son and because the, the time has, has come. All right? So it, it, as he says this, though, you know, he says, Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him. Okay, So she's listening to this conversation, and now she's like 90 years old and saying, you know, hearing him say to Abraham, your wife's going to have a son, All right? So in 11, it just points out, Abraham and Sarah were well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. It meant that uh, right, she was unable to, to have children, all right? Because she was past the age. And, you know, like, like when, women, when women age, you know, today they, they reach a certain age, and then the, they, the, their body gets to the point where they, they can no longer reproduce, all right? They, they stop, you know put it in today's terms, you stop having your period, and so forth, all right, so that you can go through menopause, all right, so you, you passed the age of, of, of having children, so that's, that's what it says, Sarah was past the age of having children, so whatever body functions normally tell you that you're able to reproduce was, was gone, all right, it was passed for her, and that's why it says Sarah had ceased after the manner of women, so that's why I'm saying, how is it even possible, you know, it's, it's all fine and well to say, you know, oh yeah, you're, you're going to have, have a baby, but it's like, how is that possible? Biologically, it doesn't, doesn't make sense, all right? So that's, that's why she reacts that way. In 12, so she laughed within herself, saying, after I'm waxed old, now this is going to happen? All right, I, I, you know, she didn't really believe it, all right? And, and why should she, all right? Because she was waiting all these years, all these years, and now when I'm too old to have a baby, you're telling me I'm going to have a baby, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. Now here, so 13, this is, you know, the, the, the Lord is addressing Abraham, right? And, and so now again, here's where it, this only makes sense if we understand that one of the three men that was there was the Lord, right? Otherwise, where, where, you know, where is he coming from, okay? So it says that the Lord who was there said to Abraham, well, why did Sarah laugh there? And uh, why did she laugh saying, shall I have a surety bear a child when I'm old? All right? Now, one thing that you need to recognize in verse 12 that we read, it says, Sarah laughed within herself. She says, it's not that she laughed out loud. It's like she laughed to herself, you know, as if, and even thought, you know, I mean, I'm really going to have, have a child when I'm old. Right, because then, again, that underscores that this was not just an average man standing there hearing this. He didn't hear any laugh, but yet he knew that she laughed. And so that's why he said in 13, why, why did she laugh, saying, shall I have a surety bear a child when, when I'm old? All right? So he, because he knew, it, because it's, it's the Lord. So he knew that Sarah would, had laughed at that uh, idea that she was going to have a child at, at this particular point in her life. All right? and, uh, and then 14, is there anything too hard for the Lord? All right, at the time appointed, I'm going to come back, and the according to time of life, Sarah's going to have a son. Basically, within, within the next year, which he said in the previous chapter, within the next year, she's going to have a son. 
Right now, now Sarah here is saying, oh, I, I didn't laugh, I didn't laugh, you know. Probably didn't, I guess she didn't laugh out loud, but of course she, well, she did laugh within herself. So that's why he says, the Lord said, oh, you laughed. And I, I, I knew it, <laughs> maybe he didn't say it out loud, but I, but I knew that, I knew you laughed. And it wasn't so much the laughing part, but it's more the disbelief part. See, that's, that's really the, the key. I mean, you know, yeah, if somebody says something, you laugh. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, all right? And maybe it's even funny, all right? But it was the idea that laughing, because I, I don't really believe this. And so, you know, he wanted her to have faith in that what he said was going to come about. And Abraham had faith, and he wanted Sarah to have faith that if I say it, then it's going to happen. I've been saying it all along, and yeah, you've been waiting a long time, but now the time has come. I'm telling you in the next year it's going to happen. So now you need to believe this, because get ready, because it's going to happen. And the men rose up from thence, and looked toward Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord, to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. Okay, we're actually changing scenes here within the same chapter, okay, that the first half of the chapter was dealt with the, them being told they're going to have this, this baby, and now the, the, we'll put that story on the shelf for a couple chapters, all right, and the, the, know that within the next year that the baby is going to happen, all right, but now other things are going to happen before that, so that's why now we're, we're shifting scenes here just a little bit, all right, the, I mean, they're still there, and they're still in the tent uh, discussing this, all right, but, but now it says that the men rose up, and to, to go, and they looked toward a place called Sodom, right? Which, uh, which Sodom was a, a city not not far from there. It's where, if you remember, uh, if you remember when Abraham and his nephew Lot had kind of separated, that Lot chose to go live near near Sodom, right? Even though it was kind of a, a shady kind of a town and uh, you know, a lot of sin going on there, but he figured he could do better there financially, so he picked that area. And uh, Abraham said, you know, pick wherever you want, and I'll, I'll take what's left. And so. Now it says the, these men, the angels, are looking towards Sodom. That's the next place they're going to go. So in 16, they're starting to, to, to walk in that direction. Abraham's kind of walking them, maybe, you know, toward the end of his property there. And the, and the Lord here said, is thinking, let's see, I mean, should, should, I, should I tell Abraham what, what's going on, or, or should I keep it from him? Right? Because it's, they're going to go check out Sodom to see what's, what's wrong there, and that's where Abraham's nephew is living. So he's, I guess he's thinking, you know, should I worry him over this or, or not? Because Abraham, I know, is, is a good guy. He's going to do what's right. So maybe I shouldn't even bother him with, with this right now. Right? So it's, as you see, that's, that's really what it says in 18 and 19. It says, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great my nation. And in, in 19, I, I know him. He will command his children and his household after him. They're going to keep the ways of the Lord and so forth. So Abraham's got his act together here. So maybe we should just let him focus on that. They're going to have, have a baby in the next year. You know, let, let him focus on that as opposed to worrying him about what's going to happen over in Sodom now when I go over there. So, so the Lord is almost uh, thinking this through now. Should I tell him or not? And then we'll see in the next verse what he decides to do. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. This is the, yeah, the Lord decided to, to share with Abraham what, what, what was going to be happening. Right? So it says, the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, their sin is very grievous, we're, we're, we're going to go check it out. All right, we're going to go see if, uh, what's happening, and if, if we find that uh, the, it's, a, you know, it's as sinful as we've heard, basically, even though, of course, God knows everything, but you know, I guess the idea is we'll, we'll, we'll give them a chance. We'll, we'll go look and see what's going on, and uh, if, if, if they're okay, fine, but if, if it's as sinful as what we've heard, then we're going to have to do something about the, about the city. All right? and, and so in 22, it says the, the men, which would be the, the, the other two, the angels, turned their faces and went towards Sodom, so that Abraham stood yet before the Lord. So the, the group kind of separated right now, right? So the Lord stayed to talk more to Abraham, and the two men who were the angels head towards Sodom, right? And, and in fact, at the beginning of, uh, at the beginning of the next chapter, chapter 19, which we're not reading tonight, but, it, but I'll, I'll just share with you like the first, the first couple lines of chapter 19 says, and there came two angels to Sodom at evening, and so forth. So they, they were the two men who, who left, all right? So they're going to show up again in chapter 19, arriving in the city of, of Sodom. But the Lord has more to say to Abraham right now, or, or vice versa, so they're going to have more of a conversation about that, this particular mission. 
And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. If you were Abraham, right, and you had a, a loved one living in a certain city, and, and you heard that, uh, in this case, uh, God's going to go potentially destroy the city, you'd be worried, right? Say, well, no, I don't, I don't want that to happen to my loved one who lives there, right? I mean, you know, suppose, suppose God came today and said, uh, okay, the, the town of, of Bristol, Pennsylvania is really wicked and I need to, to destroy <laughs> Bristol, all right? All right? We'd be saying, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> people live there who we know and you who know, are good people. So, you know, we don't want that to, to happen, all right? So Abraham, I mean, recognizing the city in general was very wicked, but saying, but there's, there's some good people there. So that's why, he, that's why he says in 23, he says, are you also going to destroy the righteous with the wicked? You know, there's good people there. So if you destroy the city, you can destroy good people as well as bad people. So that's not, that's not cool. All right? So in 24, he says, if there's 50 righteous people, 50 good people, will, will you consider sparing the, the, the city for, if there's 50 righteous people in the city? All right? And that's what he asks in, the, in 24. And then 25, is, you know, he's kind of buttering him up a little bit. He says, you know, I, uh, I know you're, you're a righteous judge. You, you, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't kill the only righteous people with the wicked. I mean, come on. If there's 50 good people there, you've you got to spare the city. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do that, would you? And so in 26, the Lord responds. He says, okay, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous, then I'll spare the whole place for their sakes. Okay, so 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom, then the, the, city's, the city's okay. All right, so he agrees. And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Peradventure there shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Wilt thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake unto him yet again, and said, Peradventure there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. Now, you know, the, the, the Lord readily agreed to spare the city if there were fifty righteous in the city. So it, it, Abraham's trying to think through I mean, what if, what if there's like almost 50, but not quite? So in, so in uh, 28, he says, you know, that should, what if there's like five less, all right? I mean, come on now, you know, it was, it was 45. I mean, that, that's pretty close to 50, isn't it? So it says the Lord's, okay, 45 the, the good people, I, I won't uh, destroy the city. Okay, how about 40? All right, can we, can we get down to 40? You know, you know I mean, he doesn't, really doesn't want to see his, his nephew and his family, you know, killed. So he's trying to, you know, save the city. So how about 40, right? If you find 40 righteous people, will that be enough? So the Lord says, okay, I, I won't destroy it if there's 40, if there's 40 righteous people there, okay? So he's like bargaining them down. So if you've ever done uh, bargaining or n negotiating, <laughs> that's, that's what this sounds like, right? And 50 is good, how about 45, how about 40, all right? He's going to get it down as low as possible so this way this way, his family members can be spared. I mean, that's mainly what he's looking for. So he's got it down, down to 40 now. And he said unto him, O let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Peradventure there shall 30 be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, Peradventure there shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. And he said, O oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abraham, and Abraham returned unto his place. He agreed to 40, all right? So he said, all right, how about 30? <laughs> Will 30 do it? All right, 30 then. All right, how about 20? You know, can, can we do it for, do it for 20? Right. So yeah, so here is it's 30, it's 20. But, you know, each time he's like, even like apologizing for, you know, for, for continuing to do this. Again, this is, this is the Lord. So it's like, well, the Lord knows best. So, I mean, who, who am I to tell the Lord what to do or is to suggest a, a better way, all right? So, you know, you tend to say, well, maybe, maybe the Lord knows what's best, but... You know, he say even in uh, 32, it says, and he said, oh, Lord, oh, let not the Lord be angry, all right? And, and this, this is the last time. Well, you know, is, so if there's 10, will you spare it for 10? All right, if, the, if we might find 10 righteous people in the whole city, then we won't destroy it. 
All right, and then so from there, so the Lord went his way, all right? So I guess that was the end of the, of the negotiating, and the Lord went his way to Sodom to see if he could find ten righteous people to spare the city, 